What's happening, ladies and germs? This is the Packer Man. And yes, this is the second ever episode of Bonus Points. It's been a while since I've done the last one. Like six months. Anyways, if you're wondering where I'm at, I'm at the local laundromat doing my laundry. Just sitting here kind of waiting for it to get done. So I figure I might as well talk about the subject of this episode. Now, if you remember watching the previous episode, which was, like I said, six months ago, then you'll remember that I was talking about uh, the very first race that the NASCAR Cup Series has ever done, and it was back then known as the Strictly Stock Series. We're going to be talking about the very first race from the 1949 NASCAR Strictly Stock Series season, or for lack of a better term, the aftermath of said race. 33 cars ended up taking the green flag in this race, including Fords, Lincolns, and even a few Buicks, and a couple of Hudson Hornets as well. In fact, Lee Petty entered this race driving a Buick, which he ended up rolling over during the race. My dad turned over and told to all the pieces, so we had to come a ride back with, uh, with my uncle to get back on. And he vowed after that race to never drive a heavy car like that again, and switched over to Chrysler, which is where he found all of his success, basically. The race ended with Glenn Dunaway taking the checkered flag by a mind-boggling three laps. However, it was what NASCAR inspectors saw in tech inspection after the race that, well, didn't really sit well with them. The guy that was flagged the winner, Glenn Dunaway, was disqualified for having Ill illegal springs on the car. Now get this, he wrapped a chain across the back end of the car, so when it went in the corner, the wheel wouldn't bounce. He had springs that moonshiners used in their hauler cars to support the loads they had. Turned out that the car that Dunaway was driving had illegal springs on the car. And let's not forget that this is called the Strictly Stock series at the time, and that's exactly what the name implies. Strictly Stock. No modifications whatsoever. Evidently, Hubert Westmoreland, who owns the car, didn't really seem to understand that. As a result of the infraction, Dunaway was stripped of the win and was given to Jim Roper, who finished second. However, the story does not end there. Not too long after the race, Hubert Westmoreland, the aforementioned owner of Glenn Dunaway's car, actually ended up suing NASCAR over the disqualification. Westmoreland ended up suing NASCAR for $10,000. Now you may be asking yourselves, uh, that doesn't really sound like a whole hell of a lot of money, $10,000. You gotta remember something, this is 1949. $10,000 in this time period is worth a lot more. Adjusted for inflation, $10,000 from 1949 is worth $124,000 in today's money. However, the case was immediately thrown out of court by Greensboro, North Carolina Judge John J. Hayes, which set a legal precedent that recognized NASCAR's power to oversee its races, which was a huge victory for a sanctioning body that was barely a year old. However, despite this, Westmoreland would stay in NASCAR as an owner, and his cars would actually win four times in his tenure as a car owner, the most famous of which is a race we'll be talking about sooner rather than later, the 1950 Southern 500, which, which there's an interesting story behind that. And thus ends the story of the aftermath of the very first cup race in NASCAR history, which we're going to call the 1949 Charlotte 200 at the old Charlotte Dirt Oval very first race in its history and it ends with controversy. Hmm. Seems like a common thing with NASCAR nowadays, doesn't it? But anyways, that's going to do it for this edition of Bonus Points. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, this is the Packer Man signing out. Thank you for watching tonight's video. Be sure to like and subscribe, you jackweeds!